Hello. It's me. Guess who's back? Back again. Megan Kenzie's back. <laughs> Tell your friends. We okay, need, you need to stop. We need a ship name. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. We need a ship name. What kind of ship name? Like a relationship name, you and I. Oh, a relationship. I thought you meant like a boat. <laughs> You're like, like, we should name a ship. You're right. I like how you just like don't question me. You just are like, okay, well, yeah, what type of ship name? <laughs> like okay. Megan, Kenzie combined. What's that? Megan. Megzy. Megzy. Oh, that's cute. Megzy or Kinnon. <laughs> Is it even like... Okay, to give yourself Maxie a relationship name. <laughs> I don't think it's even good to give Which yourself one. Which one do you one. like better? Men's. Megzy or Megzy. Kin- or Kinnon. <laughs> Kinnon's kind of good. Kinnon. <laughs> no, and Megzy. Okay. It's Corky. Okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Are you, who's kicking? Do you remember? No. Me either. Me or you? You. Okay. Three, two, one. One, welcome to The Peaceful Truth, the podcast where we talk about everything from women empowerment, feminism, and everything in between. You are joined by your two co-hosts, Kenzie and Megan. Megan. What up? I have to cough already. (laughs) So, it it feels like it's been 40 million years since I last saw you. And it's only been two weeks, but it feels like forever. I know. I think it's just because we're on a schedule of where we hang out every week. Yeah. And so then we're like, I haven't seen you in five years and I need to see you right this second. Approximately five. It's true. So what have you been doing? Why Um, didn't we film this last Sunday? Where were you, girl? Well, the Sunday before this. Or yeah, the previous Sunday. I was in San Francisco with work and it's literally the best city on the face of this planet. If you've never been to San Francisco, you need to go ASAP. And then um, last, this Sunday, I was getting my bone graft in my jaw. So how was it? Was it as bad as you thought? No, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought. It, they gave you this like crazy medication where you weren't completely asleep, but you still had no idea what was going on. And I thought it was two seconds. I thought I was literally in the room for two seconds and I was there for two hours. Isn't that great? It's so weird. <laughs> Have you ever gotten your wisdom teeth out? Yeah, but I was completely knocked out for that. Where oh. this one, this one, like I remember things. Like I remember him telling me to turn my head to the right, and I remember responding to that. Like I could still respond when people would be like, "Megan, do this." Whereas with the wisdom teeth, I was knocked out cold. Weird. Was it a different drug? It was a different you? drug. It wasn't. Oh. Um, it wasn't an IV. It was a pill. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so now I have a dead person's bone right here in my gum, in Mm. my lower gum. Thank you. Thank you, whoever did this. Yeah. I appreciate it. Now my teeth won't fall out when I'm 70. Do you get to know anything about the person that gave it to you? No. I wish I would have asked, though. Oh, man. Now I would wonder my entire life. I know. So, yeah. Thank you to whoever gave this to me. They said, um, I do remember this. Whenever I was like waking up, the doctor was like, Megan, I'm so glad that you got Invisalign or else we would have never caught this. There was little, literally no bone down there whatsoever. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. That person's are awesome. Yes. Well, that's good. But overall, good week. Work going well? Yeah, work was good. Um, I'm just doing some simple yoga rather than like anything intense mm-hmm. every time I bend down I can feel my heartbeat in my gum you know how oh, it my. like throbs yeah, yeah 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 so I'm like okay maybe I need it oh, no no physical activity um but other than that everything's good I only eat really soft food and that's that well there you go um let's see so my past two weeks have been good um not Nothing too, too crazy, but I actually went skiing two weekends ago on Sunday because we weren't recording, so I decided to go skiing. Those pictures were so pretty. Yeah, so after right after I took those pictures, um, I actually, it was kind of icy, and so there was like a layer of snow on top. And I, when I was going down the hill, I like ate it real hard, but the way my body like stopped was like my neck and my shoulder, that in-between area, 
it like hit a block of ice oh, really no. hard. And I heard my whole spine go like if you've ever got been to the chiropractor, like that sound. And in my head for like two seconds, I was like, I hope that's just like the crack sound and not like I just broke my back. Sound. Oh my gosh. So on my head, I was like freaking out. Am I paralyzed for like two seconds? And then I wiggled my toes and it was fine. And I like sat up and I like went down and it felt like not severe pain, just like, oh, that's that kind of was scary. Mm-hmm. And then like the next day it was really bad pain and it was on the other side of my neck too, the opposite side. And um I went to the doctor eventually on Wednesday and um and all of this is not that big of a deal, but it's just the most relevant um, different thing I guess that's happened to me this past week anyway it um so when I hit it I strained my neck from what the doctor said and I got a subluxation which I guess is something to do with the joints like being off slightly it's not like a break or anything but um and that's associated with whiplash oh dang and so that's why it hurts so bad. Um, but on the day of, like, I was working from home. So I went from meeting to meeting and I went home to go to a meeting over the phone. And I just didn't have time to eat at all the day I was supposed to go to the doctor. And then in the middle of the, new- of the afternoon, I was like, okay, I need to go. And I was in between another meeting and it was it was just intense. And the doctor ended up taking three hours. And so I hadn't eaten and I was just sitting there for three hours. And... Um, they gave me a, sh- uh, they were going to give me a steroid shot to like make me move and like help with the swelling. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay. And she comes in and, and the needle looks pretty big. So I just like stare at it. I'm like, just as a heads up, I'm, I'm pretty nervous right now. And she's like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. And she puts it in my butt and I'm like, fine. The, <laughs> I realized that could have be edited. <laughs> the steroid shot. Dang it. Um, okay. So, and anyway, um, so, and, <laughs> and so then I stand up and you like, if it's, if you've ever gotten a steroid shot, you can like really feel the liquid go yes, through your veins. I it's have, the weirdest feeling. It's the strangest thing. And so I was feeling that and I stood up and I was like, this is weird. And then I was like walking to go get an x-ray. I was about to walk out of the room to get an x-ray. And I like look at the nurse and I like feel really out of it. I'm like, am I supposed to feel nauseous? And it was like the wrong nurse I was even talking to. Oh, yeah. And she goes, with what? And I was like, I feel nauseous. And I just kept saying, I feel nauseous. And then the room started to go away. (gasps) You passed out? Yeah. Oh, my God. Have you ever passed out before? Yeah. Oh, I haven't ever. That's like my third time. Did you hit the ground? No, they they were all around me because they saw me because I guess it has warning signs. And I was like, I feel nauseous. I feel nauseous. And then my vision, I was like, I can't see. And I started being confused. And then my face w- went white, really like super pale. Mm-hmm. And so they all rushed around. Real does fast. your does does the world look black? No, it well not to me. I don't know if it's like different for everyone, but for me, it's like tunnel vision and like it's it's like when you get up too fast and you can like only see a little bit and it's kind of like Gray black on the and outside. yeah, weird in your eyes, you know. Yeah. So that's what it felt like. Oh my god, how long were you out for? Just like a second. I was like in a cold sweat and dry even when I woke. <laughs> You were like, all because of a dang shot. And, well, you hadn't eaten in like 24 hours. <laughs> Maybe 12. But yeah, I, I was just like, not good. But anyway, the neck feels okay. It's on and off uh, feeling bad. I need to go to the doctor, uh, another doctor to figure out the bone stuff. But yeah. And then it was Aaron's birthday, actually, this past weekend. I saw that. Happy birthday to Aaron. Yeah, my brother-in-law and Chelsea's husband. And then on Sunday, I went to brunch with one of my new friends that I made here. And that was so fun. And I helped her go dress shopping. And it was just nice to make a new girlfriend. Perfect. I saw you guys drinking mimosas. It was so fun. Sorry if I have a lisp. It's okay. You're (laughs) forgiven. (laughs) Okay, so I guess before we get in... Oh, and I also went to the Women's March. Duh. 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 Well, I was in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Well, did you see one at all? Mm-hmm. Then? We, um, I made Des march in it for a little bit. Oh, did you take a picture? Mm, I took pictures of around me. Oh, of around you. Got it, got it, got it. They took, they had the best signs. I mean, per usual. Creative. Um, so I thought it was cool. And we, I guess we can kind of both describe what it's like, but it's like, 
when you're walking just it was very peaceful actually and everyone was just walking and talking and every now and again there'd be chants or mm-hmm. something but. yep that's how it was in san francisco um the streets were packed i mean Same. a huge turnout and just people laughing and looking at signs and every now and then chants would come up but yes very peaceful yeah and i marched just because mine i i like really don't and i know people are going to disagree with me i feel like it's not political for me to be doing it like for me it was to end stereotypes to end sexual harassment um to stop the nation's culture that just dismisses women's claims, discrimination, whether that's belittling women for being women, mansplaining, misogyny, and the pay gap, um, which all of this Me Too movement and this movement in general of women empowerment in the past year, it does seem like it's changing some men's mind. It's, I've even heard men say that I'm very close with say that it's like help to give them different perspective. Most of the men I knew before would consider themselves feminists, but it has changed their perspective. Um, And it's about supporting other women and increasing empowerment to seek more influential and superior roles and help those future generations of women. Perfect, powerful stuff. I just saw some other ladies hating on the Women's March, so I wanted to explain why I marched, because I think it's kind of silly that other ladies hated on it. Perfect. Everyone has their own opinion, though. Um, In San Francisco, we went to a really cool bookstore um, called City Lights, and I bought um, Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gray. Yeah. And so I'm going to read it, and then maybe we can do an episode on it. Oh, yeah. Maybe I can borrow it, too. It's like... um, New York Times bestseller, all that good stuff. And it's about like how she considers herself a feminist, but a bad one. So like the first, like, because she feels like their feminism is like an extreme thing, you know, where it's like, it can be like, no, I don't want you to open the doors for me. No, I want to pay for my own meal or whatever. And um, she's saying, I, I still maybe want men to open doors for me and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, I do think feminism gets a bad name, though. And that's just my opinion. It's just a word. At the end of the day, it's just a label. But in my opinion and what I label feminism as, and I know a lot of people don't identify with this word, but I think the word isn't a bad word. I think it's just general want for equality of the sexes. Right. And I think that that's her point, too. So, OK, good. Yeah. Cool. I can't wait to see it or hear about it. Um, So just as a warning, today's podcast, before you dive in um, after our little intro there, um, it is a trigger warning um, for those that might be um, impacted by sexual assaults and just graphic content in general. Yes, because um, we decided to do our podcast today on Larry Nasser, who is very much in the spotlight right now. And um, we like to do real life, what's happening now in the world. And this is a really big movement. So today's podcast, I guess, is about him. And he is now guilty of sexual abuse, found guilty and found guilty also on charges of child pornography. So we wanted to kind of address, give the facts, as well as um, provide some insight to all of the people who helped cover this up. And um, I think Kenzie will kick it off with um, kind of the backstory in case uh, you haven't heard about it. Yeah. Um, So I do also want to, we are going to spend some time recognizing the victims and their bravery as well, um, because he should not be remembered. Anyway. Larry Nassar. Um, so these, the things I'm talking about comes from the New York Times, the Indy Star, the Washington Post, and NPR. So Larry has been sentenced to prison between 40 to 175 years for different uh, sex crimes, some, several of them against minors, uh, molested more than 160 women, whether that be touching them, fondling their genitals, and other sexual assault uh things. Um, He is a former physician for the American gymnastics team. He also worked at Michigan State University Clinic and more than 100 women recently testified him against him this month. um, Some of them being Olympic gold medalists. Um, So did you watch that trial at all? And did you watch what the women were saying about him at all? 
I did. I didn't watch all of it, but I did w- watch, you know, the some of the speeches and hear what some of the women had to say. Very powerful and very brave of them. Very um, brave. I watched, we watched their bravery and I think it was empowering each other too. Like they kind of bonded not bonded but they came together you know as a united force and shows how strong of a voice that women can have and some of them would even say like I didn't plan on doing this but after I saw the bravery of all these other women stand up then I want to tell my story too yeah so it's empowering each other which is it shows how powerful if women band together in a positive way so the Indianapolis Star first reported on this, um, Larry Nassar in general, and these accusations, and some of these accusations, two years ago in 2016. And so I think it shows the importance of journalism there that it kind of, this kind of kick-started that. And I apologize if I'm not correct on that, but I also think it's sad that it's taken two years for this to happen. Um. So I wanted to recognize one of the first women in that article who stood up. It's Rachel Den Hollander. So I apologize if I pronounce that wrong, but she was the first person to come out publicly about this. And she's and the Indy Star also said the USA Gymnastics failed to forward the allegations of sex abuse from her to law enforcement. Um, so they knew about it. And then in January 2017, his license was finally suspended by Michigan. Um, critical. Many people have been critical of MSU, Michigan State University, because there's been reports for more than 20 years. Um, several people on the U.S. Gymnastic Olympic Committee and USA Gymnastics and MSU have resigned. Um And he's gotten also even more controversy for saying this in a letter about this whole incident because Larry wrote a letter that the judge read out loud. And it says, or maybe he did, but it says, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. It's just a complete nightmare. And the whole courtroom was like shocked by that statement. You know? Right. Um, And then she says that she signed his death sentence. And the judge said that. Yeah. Dang. And recorded all this abuse on camera. And um, then I'll really quick before, and then we can bounce to you to talk about some of the other points. But um, there was one more thing I wanted to read about, like how long this has been occurring. Okay, so it, it's been occurring. Uh, the first report is in 1994. That was not the first person. The first time that someone came out was 1997. That's the first recorded one. But the abuse started in 1984. And this is how long it's taken. That is insane. So one of the things that um, comes to light is how many people had to help cover this up. Which to me, I don't understand. I don't understand the reason why wanting to cover this up. I mean, yes, okay, he was a great doctor, but guess what? Get another doctor that doesn't do it. And who knows if he? I don't know. Was he great? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, like, what's the point of covering it all up? I just don't get. I just don't get why all these people had to come together to cover up something that was so terribly insane. So I read an article from Deadspin by Laura Wagner. It's a list of people who are accused of enabling Larry. Mm. The first is obviously Michigan State University. Um, Then head gymnastics coach Kathy Cleggs reportedly learned of the abuse in 1997. Yeah. But she responded to one survivor who came forward that she was, quote, misunderstanding what was going on, end quote. She later retired in February, I believe, of 2017. So she had been the head gymnastics coach for that long. And I also, that's also one of the other really big points was that they were misunderstanding what was going on. And I'm sorry, but I don't see how you can argue. If you feel uncomfortable in any situation, then you should come forward. And also, you should feel like authorities actually listen to you. Yes, especially people you trust. And your vulnerable child. Another MSU um, athletic director, Mark Hollis, um, who said that he didn't know of any of the abuse, resigned last week. So it's kind of like one of those things. If you didn't know anything about it, then why would you resign? Um, President Luanna Simon, who was informed of the police report in 2014, but states that she had no idea who Larry even was, resigned last week. 
Dr. William Strapnell, um, former dean and uh, Larry's former boss, allowed him to return to work with their athletes in 2014 while there was still an open criminal investigation, and he stepped down last month. So that's the um, Michigan State University. There was also a list that kept continuing of people in the um, athletics department, the gymnastics department. Um, But then we also need to touch on the U.S. gymnastics side. So the chairman, Paul Perilla, vice chairman, Jay Bender, treasurer, Betsy Kelly, all resigned last week from the U.S. gymnastics board. Um, the U.S. Olympic Committee called for the rest of the b- board to resign, and they stepped down over the weekend. Wow. Um, do you know Bella and Marty, Marta <coughs> Crowley? No. <laughs> they're like those two. They're the husband and wife. I want to say they're, they're, they're from Russia, I believe. They are legendary gymnastics coaches, and they have like a gymnastics um, ranch in Texas. Interesting. And the, like the huge gymnasts that are so good and popular will all go to this ranch in Texas to get, uh, the gymnastics training. And they are accused of creating an unhealthy environment that allowed his abuse to flourish. So the U S gymnastics team no longer sends gymnasts to the ranch and they're being sued by a former gymnast who was abused by Nasser. So these two are huge. Like I can remember being little and like I am obsessed with the Olympics. For those of you who don't know me, I am literally obsessed with the Olympics. Mm. Like I know this couple, like the, they trained the best gymnasts that we've ever seen. And they have this ranch that Larry would go to, to, um, abuse these women. It's terrible. That's awful. So, just these huge faces and I just I just don't see the point all for one person I just don't see the point um besides Mm. the U.S. gymnastics team and MSU law enforcement is also reported to help hide the scandal so in 2004 one of Larry's victims Brianne Randall told four investigators with the Meridian Township Police that she was abused Dave Hall, who was the acting police chief at that time, admitted that police declined to bring her accusations against Larry to the prosecutor. Oh, my God. Why? I don't know why so many people. Maybe it's like a taboo thing in people. But now it's not, you know, but maybe it was like a taboo thing to accuse. I don't know. Such a. I don't know. People maybe weren't even brave enough to do it. Not that I'm making excuses. I'm just saying that's the only reason I can think of. Right. But it kind of, this whole thing reminds me of going back to like Harvey Weinstein and how many knew about his thing, Mm -hmm. you know, too. That's true. And many people had to have known about both, but it's like people who doubt women, like I was saying earlier, and this is why we have these marches is because it's about the people in the culture that doubt women. And it's, and it, it ra- and these people like to rally behind them for some reason and enable this behavior. So this is why it's important to march, why it's important to have a podcast like this, why it's important in general just to speak out because a change in attitude and continued conversation is important. Speak the truth, girl. I know we talked about Ali Raisman and some other of the um, survivors, but I also wanted to mention Michaela Maroney, um, Olympic gold medalist. Uh, she used the hashtag Me Too movement on Twitter, stating that Larry repeatedly molested her starting from when she was 13 years old all the way until when she retired in 2016. Michaela Maroney uh, subsequently filed a lawsuit against Nasser, Michigan State University, the United States Olympic Committee, and USA Gymnastics. The lawsuit accused USA Gymnastics of covering up the sexual abuse by paying Maroney $1.25 million to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So talk about cover-up. <clears throat> That's awful. That's awful and on so many levels. So um, I'm glad that, you know, all of this is coming to light. Um 
wish it would have happened sooner, but I'm glad that this is coming to light and that survivors are coming up, standing up together and having a voice. I completely agree. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the women um, that and the victims. And this is from a Vox article, but some of it is from other articles as well, which I'll try to mention. But Kyle Stevens is uh, also one of the victims. Um, she told her parents about this abuse at 12 years old. They didn't believe her because Nasser manipulated her parents and she was then a forced to apologize. And I believe I also read an article that it might have been within this article, but it may be another one that Kyle Stevens' father committed suicide later. And she believes partly because he realized she was telling the truth. It's crazy how one man can affect so many people in, in such a negative way. And this just to come to light now. Yeah, completely. And 1997, like Megan said, was the first time to report this abuse, which is what now um, several how many <laughs> I can do math 20 years ago long time ago 20 yeah 20 um and then 2014 Amanda told NBC and Amanda wanted to be anonymous so that's why I'm not using her last name um told NBC that he tried to molest her she complained and the school took no action um and all these events started at least in 1994 but yeah is there anything else that uh, you wanted to add? I kind of wanted to end a little bit on a positive note with Allie Raisman's testimony. No, I think that's I think that's great. Let's just um, end it on as much of a positive note as we can. This is taken uh, partially from Allie Raisman's testimony. And she ended with, If we are to believe in change, we must first understand the problem and everything that contributed to it. Now is not the time for false reassurances. We need an independent investigation of exactly what happened, what went wrong, and how it can be avoided for the future. Only then can we know what changes are needed. Only then can we believe such changes are real. Your Honor, I ask you to give Larry the strongest possible sentence, which his actions deserve. For by doing so, you will send a message to him and to the other bruisers that they cannot get away with the with their horrible crimes they will be exposed for the evil they are and they will be punished to the maximum extent of the law let this sentence strike fear in anyone who thinks it's okay to hurt another person abusers your time is up the survivors are here standing tall and we are not going anywhere and please your honor stress the need to investigate how this happened so that we can hold accountable those who empowered and enabled larry nasser so that we can repair and once again believe in this wonderful sport my dream is that one day everyone will know what the words me too signify, but they will be educated and able to protect themselves from predators like Larry so that they will never, ever, ever have to say the words me too. I have chills. It's so good. So powerful. You go girl. And thank you for sticking up for us, Ali, and for all the other ladies out there. Perfect. Well, whew. That's a good, powerful note to end on. Um, but, but do you have a positive thing for this week? <laughs> to also um, end on a good note. To end on a more lighthearted note, um, my positive thing is that I'm going to Chicago in two-ish weeks. And then the weekend after, my best friend Charlotte and her husband are coming to visit. Yay! Oh my God, should she be on the podcast? She should be. Oh Would my she God. want to? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> She's going to be like, me. <laughs> uh, well, I'm excited. I haven't met her. Yeah. Or maybe I did briefly once. Really briefly, maybe. Um, That's awesome. Well, and mine is participating in the Women's March. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.